Barry Blast says he's getting, Mr. Nigger says he's getting tired of making videos. And I understand, you know, I, uh, <clears throat> I haven't made videos in years. It's because black people will try to shut you down. I'm sure they're going to do it to this account. And uh, sometimes it's those that are think that they're sensitive to black. It, oh, I know black people. And I, I'm offended that you would do that or whatever. These people are not helping black people. And I'll tell you something to those people. Black people don't want your defense. They don't want your help. Okay? They uh, don't believe that you understand them. And uh, you may as well butt out because many of them are very against you. Okay, and you may as well just butt out and leave them be. And uh, don't flag a video. Don't flag a video because you think it's offensive to somebody or it might be offensive to someone. If it offends you, get the fuck out. And if you think it might offend someone else, fuck off. You know what I mean? Don't worry about it, at least. Let me be more curious about that. Don't worry about that. Let people become actually offended. You, you's, you's trying to to, to cuss construct a scrawl man you trying to construct a, a scrawl man and you can't do that understand shit See, I'm blacker than all of y'all <laughs> I don't think that you know many black people I, I, I saw the one black girl that was putting on white face in your video there very a blast but uh <clears throat> you know I'm she seems very decent I mean I know decent black people too and it's just an awful shame the way culture is going. 70% or they say 75 now, uh, percent of, of children born to blacks, black women, obviously, are born out of wedlock. And I don't know, uh, if you've watched Maury Povich, it's, it's always like a certain thing that goes down. Okay. Uh, if it's a black woman and a black man, he hopes he is not the father almost 100% of the time. So don't make me say sometimes and percentages and shit. For the most part, everything I say is for the most part, okay? And that's why I, I lean in saying that sort of thing in that direction is because it's for the most part. That's what's going on in the world, okay? So the black man doesn't want to be the father. The black woman is giving him hell, okay? Which has a lot to do with why black men prefer white women. Everybody prefers white women, of course, naturally. But uh, a black man will be attracted to a very fat white woman. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not like that. I'm sure there are people out there like that. But the standard of beauty is different. I'm rambling on this one, but that's okay. When, when you look at the Venus of Billendorf, the uh, Venus of Willendorf, however you want to say or pronounce that, and uh, look that up. You can see that this is a sculpture, which is a, uh, in my opinion, a woman of African descent. And I think indications are there for her hair being of Afro nature uh, in in small Afro puffs. And, uh, you know, her ass is like a shelf, man. Fat old ass. Back that thing up, girl. You know, I don't really go for that, though. Okay? But when you look at that, you see that there are different standards of beauty. Uh, one terrible thing that goes on in Africa is the fattening of women. Look up, you know, fat houses, fattening of women. And uh, it is akin to genital mutilation and female castration, which I don't know if you know about that or what that is, but I'll explain both for the hell of a hell. Uh, they're both very African. And uh, in the fattening process, it often starts as a very young girl. And this is going on today. I'm not talking about history or anything. I'm, I'm always talking about today for the most part. I'm not stuck in something 150 years ago blaming somebody else. Okay? I've had it rough my whole life. And, and nobody has stepped up to help me regarding the government or welfare or shit like this. Okay? Thank God I have a family that is a support system to me. Okay? Not that I've created one of my own, but I, I have, you know, people that are older than me and, and cousins and whatnot. Anyway, they take these girls at a young age and they begin to fill uh, them with a uh, couscous and camel's milk combination. I don't know what their word for it is. Uh, I know they say couscous. Of course, everyone says couscous. Uh, they make them eat four bowls a day. When I say a bowl, I mean, this thing holds like a gallon. Okay. And if they're not eating for some moment, 
uh, they'll be pinched with these wooden tongs. And uh, injuries and deformations can occur from that. But as long as that girl gets fat, it's fine. Now, you saw Jessica Simpson in this country gain some weight. She was thought of as really hot. And when she gained that weight, it was a big issue with the tabloid media. She kind of, in my opinion, reacted to that by participating in a show. I can't remember the name. Uh, something about standards of beauty, though, is, is the gist of it. And uh, it's called The Price of Beauty. That's what it was called. And in one of these, she went to Africa and displayed this fattening process, really just to say, see, not everybody wants skinny girls. Some people want fat girls. And she failed to expose that this is a horrific process akin to female uh, genital mutilation and female castration, which I'll now talk about. What is it and why does it occur? What it is, is the removal of the clitoris, often without anesthetic, uh, anesthetic or antiseptics. And uh, that is to remove the enjoyment from sex for the woman, done at a young age. And they don't want them to ever have known the selfish value of pleasure from sex. So they remove that ability. But additionally, because... The African is very hung up on the size of his penis because not all of them have large ass penises, but they all have to be uh, living up to this mythos. What they do is they cut the vagina as if like when in birth, sometimes they cut the vagina, they have to sew it back up and maybe a, a, a loving wife will say, hey, put an extra stitch in there, buddy, you know, tighten it up for me. Well, and vaginoplasty, same type of thing. Uh, they'll, they'll scar and, and, and they'll, uh, cut up the area and then they'll stitch that together so that the, the vagina, the vulva area of the vagina, uh, is smaller now and the entry is tighter once it heals up so that the man can feel like he has a bigger penis. <sighs> anyway, I don't even know what I began talking about in this video. I'm just going to ramble until they cut me off and I know that's going to happen. And, but luckily, people will save videos and they will be reposted. And uh, there's no unsaying this sort of thing. That's why I, I just have to appeal to you to look for yourself, man. Check out modern Africa. Okay? That's step one. As black people, look deeply into modern Af Africa and be objective. I, that's another problem. You've got to be objective. But you look at it and... and Quit giving them a pass and quit saying this is a result of the white man in Africa. And ask yourself, do I really want to claim that identity as something that has been stolen from me and that I'm entitled to? Because it sucks. Be happy to be American. And we'll all do that. We can all do that, I think. I, it may not be too late. The way things are looking is looking like there's a brewing racial tension. It seems clear to me, because I really study it, I suppose. Maybe I'm looking for it and I see more of it. That doesn't mean what I'm seeing is suddenly untrue or irrational. What, what I'm seeing is the forefront of a coming wave of racial aggression, a tension, a surface tension. So, uh, you know, I, I hope it's avoidable for everybody, but I see a lot of blacks very angry. I'm going to jump now to a man named Omar Thornton. And his name is a anagram for Moore. M-O-A-R. And that is a misspelling of M-O-R-E. <clears throat> and it's a netizen type thing. A slang that also is devolving our language. Lols. Saying that just for lols. Lols. What? <laughs> and, uh, if you just type it in Google and click on images, you'll get the idea. More means I can't get enough. I got to have more. So you using the mouth is more like, Mah! but they're saying more under there, you know? So anyway, this guy's an anagram for that. And his name is Thornton, not Thornton. So don't go make the mistake of looking up some Omar Thornton on Facebook and calling him the N word. I know you're probably asking, why would he say N-word right now? <clears throat> Maybe I'll talk about that later. 
this guy basically killed eight people because he thought they were racist, according to some, and according to uh, his 911 recordings. He seemed like a very reasonable guy. He seemed uh, nicely dressed and articulate. He also seemed like a shy, emotional, sensitive man. But he is not a hero, okay? He is an hero, if you want to get 21st century cultural on it. Look that one up. And hero. Maybe you put ED with it. You'll find out all about and heroes. That's what he was. <clears throat> and he did it because he said they's racist. But he never exhausted any channels. Usually when there's a mass murder, a white man does it. But he has exhausted all the proper channels. He's tried as hard as he can with everyone possible in every chain of command. He's exhausted it. Now he feels like the only way to draw attention to his the injustice that's been done to him is to kill a bunch of people. Sometimes those are random people in a restaurant or on the street. Uh, sometimes they are co-workers. In this case, Omar Thornton, a black man, killed eight white employees of a uh, Manchester, Connecticut beer distributor called Hartford Distributors. And uh, there were some Collateral reports, his, his girlfriend said that on his cell phone there was some evidence that people there were racist, saying we've got to get rid of this nigger. That there was a hangman drawn on the wall as one week for a game, but this one said nigger under it. And uh, other shit like this. <clears throat> nigger was part of a sentence under that hangman. But the thing is, he was racist. He was the one viewing the world through a racial lens. He was saying, they're firing me for stealing this beer because I'm black. And that's just got to stop. You know, they're firing me for stealing this beer because I'm black. He came to work knowing he had a disciplinary meeting. He knew that he had been busted and that he was in the wrong. But rather than take it like a man... He brought two guns to work, and he began to shoot people. Apparently, according to his mother and their family, whatever, he, he called after killing five people and said that they were racist. I got the five racists. I killed five racists in some kind of context. But then he killed three more people, and he tried to kill more people than that, okay? So it wasn't five people. It was the white man. It was the white power structure that he confused with the working white man. It was that one percenter. They're a problem for us all. And you need to recognize that we can be on the same team in the struggle. But if you make it a white-black thing, which you do as black people, it's going to be bad. It was bad for hundreds of years before. And by the grace of white people, it is not that way now. We are 76%. You are 13.4%. Yet you take 50% well, of the murder statistic and 33% of the welfare. A lot of black people have tried to argue with me about that and say, you're going by the prison statistics, the FBI murder rate statistics. And they say, oh, because they're letting white motherfuckers go for murder, really. Okay, that's why white statistics are lower, because they're letting them go for murder. Anyway, they say, if you take the FBI statistics, we're only 12% of the population, and we only do 36% of the murder. Really? Okay, so you only, your argument is you only do three times your population's rate for murder rate. That is not okay anymore. It's got to stop. There can't be a double standard. There is only true equality in a nation. There will never be worldwide equality. All these ideals we preach will never happen to the world. But in this country, there can only be one standard, and that's when equality can emerge. Without one standard, and no special circumstances based on hiring by race, that's wrong, right? You shouldn't hire based on race. So let's stop doing that and see how it works out. I'm going to cut this video. I'm out of time, but I'll, I'll make another one right fucking now.